Good morning, everyone. Great to see you again on this screen. While the whole world is still aching because of this COVID-19 pandemic that we haven't experienced for the past 100 years, I'm so grateful for this virtual worship service where we all join together again as God's children. Friends in Christ, let us come together to the Lord our God. The Lord be with you and also with you. Well, when you come to worship before God, just come as you are. Come as you are. Let us sing it together. Come as you are. Come as you are, feel quiet at home, close to my heart, loved and forgiven. Come as you are, why stand alone? No need to fear, love sets no limit. No need to fear, love never ends. Don't run away, shamed and disheartened. Rest in my love, trust me again. I came to call sinners, not just the righteous. I came to bring peace, not to condemn. Each time you fail to live by my promise, why do you think I'd love you the less? Come as you are, that's how I love you. Come as you are, trust me again. Nothing can change the love that I bear you. All will be well, just come as you are. Now it's time for us to join together in prayer. To thank God for this opportunity for, for this worship. So we are going to say the same prayer. Let us pray. Light of light, Lord of lords, God our Father, we give you thanks for the promise of this day. We give you thanks for the blessings of this day. Lord our God, we also give you thanks for the challenge of this day. This place is yours. This day is yours. And we are yours as well. Thank you again for connecting us on these screens as a worship community. And help us to put aside all the worries and doubts from our lives and to worship you and you only. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity of gathering before you as your children. Send your spirit to touch the heart of everyone this morning through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hello, everyone. Jason Park here, reading from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 13, verses 24 to 30 and verses 36 to 43. Uh, it's from the Good News Translation. The Parable of the Weeds. Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like this. A man sowed good seed in his field. One night when everyone was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. When the plants grew and the heads of grain began to form, then the weeds showed up. The man's servants came to him and said, Sir, it was good seed you sowed in your field. Where did the weeds come from? It was some enemy who did this, he answered. Do you want us to go and pull up the weeds, they asked him. 
No, he answered, because as you gather the weeds, you might pull up some of the wheat along with them. Let the wheat and the weeds both grow together until harvest. Then I will tell the harvest workers to pull up the weeds first, tie them in bundles and burn them, and then to gather in the wheat and put it in my barn. Jesus explains the parable of the weeds. When Jesus had left the crowd and gone indoors, his disciples came to him and said, Tell us what the parable about the weeds in the field means. Jesus answered, The man who sowed the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seed is the people who belong to the kingdom. The weeds are the people who belong to the evil one. And the enemy who sowed the weeds is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the harvest workers are angels. Just as the weeds are gathered up and burned in the fire, so the same thing will happen at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send out his angels to gather up out of his kingdom all those who cause people to sin and all others who do evil things, and they will throw them into the fiery furnace, where they will cry and gnash their teeth. And God's people will shine like the sun in their Father's kingdom. Listen then, if you have ears. This is the word of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. On November 18, 1978, 918 South Americans died in people's temples in Guyana. The date included 276 children. They described the mass suicide as a revolutionary suicide. From 1994 to 1997, the Order of the Solar Temples members in France began a series of mass suicides which led to roughly 74 deaths. Farewell's letters were left by members stating that they believed their death would be moving on to Sirius, which is a sun-like planet in the universe. On March 17, 2000, 778 members of the Movement for the Restoration of the Ten Commandments of God killed themselves in Uganda. Well, these were all religious sects and cults, and one of the most influential theologies or beliefs behind this mass suicide is the apocalypse, the end of the world. And partially, it had something to do with today's Bible reading, the weeds and the wheat. They thought they were the only wheat in the world, and all others just the weeds. So instead of waiting for the apocalypse, they must have forced the end of the world so they would be going into heaven, they thought. Today's reading begins like this. Jesus told them another parable. He said, the kingdom of heaven is like this. A man sowed good seed in his field. Then the enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat. When the wheat sprouted and formed the heads, then the weeds also showed up. And when the servants asked, Master, do you want us to go and pull them up? He answered, No. You may root up the wheat with the weeds. Let's wait until the harvest. First collect the weeds and burn them. Then gather the wheat and bring it into my barn. On its surface, there is not much to be said about this parable except make sure you are not a weed because the weeds do not belong in the garden of God. Then, who are the weeds after all? Simply put, the weeds are all those who do evil. Well, that sounds a bit disturbing, isn't it? All who do evil? 
then where does God draw the line? Murderers, terrorists, or thieves? Or does lying on your tax returns count? How about gossiping, particularly if it results in the pain of others? What about those who ignore their neighbors who are in need? Where is the line drawn? You see, no human being in the entire human history has been perfect without a flaw. And isn't it that the blood of Christ covers all our sins? Well, I don't know about you, but if that day comes when God begins pulling all the weeds, I certainly can't depend on my own virtue. Then, what is our hope? Personally, I like the parable of the weeds very much because I hate pulling weeds. However, pulling weeds is an important part of our improving life, whether it be a family, a career, a work, a finance, or business, even in our social life. Having said all this, how then do we need to understand the parable of the weeds in the scripture reading today? In a 1986 year movie called The Mission, the stories take place in South America in the 18th century. 18th century Spanish Jesuits tried to protect a remote South American tribe in danger of falling under the rule of uh, pro-slavery Portugal. And Robert De Niro plays a slave hunter who is later converted to Christ and helps to protect the native Indian tribe. And one of the most touching scenes of the movie is when Robert De Niro is following the missionary team on their return journey from a remote Indian tribe on the deep mountains of Brazil. Being burdened with a load of terrible guilt from his past as a slave hunter, De Niro has been always dragging a heavy bundle that contained his armor and sword that he used to use when he was a slave hunter. With this, he is seeking a kind of redemption on his own. Reaching the outskirts of the native's territory, the native Indians recognize him as a slave trader, and one of them runs to him with a knife. Completely unexpectedly, however, the native Indian embraces the Nero and cuts away his heavy bundle. Then the Nero collapses and sobs.
Carrying the heavy bundle of his past sin and wrongdoings has been his way of seeking redemption for many years. But at the same time, it's been a major hindrance that made it difficult for him to move on with his new found life in Christ. Until the moment of his heavy bundle being cut away, he had focused on his old life of slave trader with painful regrets. After that moment, however, he realized for the first time he had a new life to focus on at the expense of all others, and that was his new mission anyway. Friends in Christ, this is the way I like us to have a look at the reading this morning. And I believe this is exactly what this parable of the weeds can teach us. <clears throat> the question we should ask is not whether we belong to the weeds or the weeds. We could focus on the weeds, trying to pull them up every time they appear, but we also know this would not work because in the fields of our hearts and our lives, there will be always the weeds coming up on and on and on. And we would probably end up like Robert De Niro in that film, spending much of our life looking back with pains and regrets. The Apostle Paul was very much like this when he said in Romans chapter 7, In my inner being I delight in God's law, but I see another law at work in me, waging war against each other. What a wretched man I am! Who will rescue me from this body that is taking me to death? Paul was feeling hopeless and helpless, focusing on the weeds in his life until he came to realize uh, who he really was in Christ. And he put it this way in 2 Corinthians, anyone who is in Christ is a new person. Look, the old has gone, the new is here. And at that very moment, Paul decided to focus on his new life in Christ every day spending most of his time producing good wits for God and his fellow people. In today's reading from the Gospel of Matthew, the servants came to the farmer asking what they should do about these weeds in the field, and the farmer replied like this, Don't do anything. Just leave the weeds alone. We will wait until harvest to pull them up fast and burn them. You see, this is not a written record of a certain historical fact or an event. This is a very special story, parable, that Jesus made up to point out a very important message for us. And I'd like to draw your attention to why the farmer didn't allow his servants to pull up the weeds. He didn't mean, just forget it, it's too late to do something about them. The point here is, the farmer said it because of his great concern for the weeds. Yes, pulling up the weeds uh, was also important in the farmer's business, but producing good weeds was the most important in his business. To bring the parable back to our lives, we might need to spend some time occasionally to recognize the weeds and to pull them up whenever they appear. But if you focus on this job too much, I think you are neglecting the weeds in your life unconsciously. So it's like a tail wagging the dog, wagging the dog. If you focus on your strengths or gifts instead, on your possibilities or good dreams, on your hope or future, I mean, if you focus on your wit instead of the weeds as a believer, I'm sure the weeds in you and your life will shrivel 
and wither continually. And even though they would not disappear, dis- disappear uh, completely, they would be like a lion with no teeth. Still, a question remains: What are we going to about the weeds after all? Are we going to just leave them and pretend they are not there at all? No. We got to do something about them. The weeds. Are the enemy's product. The weeds are not from our good Lord. So here is a suggestion for you: You will kill the weeds without pulling them up. You will kill them by weakening and suffocating them. And at the same time, spend more time, more energy, and more efforts and more prayers. To grow and strengthen all the wits that you have in you and in your life. If anyone asks for your shirt, hand over your coat as well. If anyone asks you to go one mile together, go with them two miles. Be kinder, be more generous, and be more patient. Love them more. You see, Christianity is not just being a good person for the sake of being good. If it's so, you are merely looking at people. But if you are trying to be good a person for the sake of God in heaven, you are looking at God in heaven. And I think that's the purpose in our life for this world. Amen. Well, I'd like to ask you again to spend some moments together in prayer, especially for those who need our prayers today. So let us pray. Help us, Lord, to spend more time and effort to focus on the wheat that you have planted in us, in our lives. Bless our hearts and our lives, so the fruits. That we produce will feed and nourish many others. We turn to you, Lord, in times of fear and uncertainty, as we do in terms of joy and celebration. We praise, praise for those who have been struck down by this COVID-19. We pray for their healing, recovery, and well-beings. And we thank you for the sacrificial cares of all health workers and volunteers for those ill. Give them your strength, Lord. Give them your comfort. We also pray for our family members, our friends, our colleagues, and our church members, not just in our congregation, but also everywhere across the world. Friends. In Christ, let us name the names of the people we need to have in the following silence. So let us remember them in a brief silence now. Bless Lord. To be a blessing to your world through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us continue to join together in the prayer that Jesus has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trials, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, power, and glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Change my heart, O oh God. Change my heart, O oh God. Make it ever true. Change my heart, O oh God. 
May I be like you? Change my heart, O oh God. Make it ever true. Change my heart, O oh God. May I be like you? You are the power, I am the clay. You are a p o r a t o r I am the clay. m o l me and make me. This is what I pray. Change my heart. Change my heart, O oh God. Make it ever true. Change my heart, O oh God. May I be like you. Jesus, so oh Fill your land. Come and fill your land. Let us now go back to the world to serve the Lord by serving the people that you have in your life. And the love of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you, and your families, and your churches. And the whole world, now and forever. Amen.